All right. Thanks for tuning in. Another great episode of PFREI, A Passion for Real Estate Investments. This interview is, this is going to be an awesome interview. This man needs no introduction. You can just see his face and you know automatically who he is. This is, this is the note legend. Oh man, I remember back in 2011, somewhere around 2012, the first time I saw you speak was at uh, Noteworthy. And um, I think the following years after that, you got an award or something like that. But just the strategies from seller financing, because I got involved doing institutional loans, but then you got on stage and you talked about a whole different thing that just blew my mind away, which I had no idea which was happening, which was the seller financing. And you always, um, by the way, it's Eddie Speed, guys. I didn't mention his name, but it's Eddie Speed, no school, colonial capital. Um, basically, um, the stuff you talked about just blew my mind away. And, and you always stay ahead of the trend, right? And I, I like that. So I wanted to bring you on today to share your knowledge um, with everyone and talk about this thing that you have going out buying a trend. Before we get started, my first question that I always ask all of the guests is, why are you passionate for real estate investing? Wow, what a great question. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, uh, I know you're a spiritual guy. And uh, I think you can connect with this. I think God just blessed me with something. I got into it too young. I wasn't, I wasn't doing it before. So I just kind of stumbled into the note business. And, uh, you know, I've been doing it now a dang long time, right? About 40 years. Yeah, man. And, um, and I just find it, particularly creative financing, I just find it super interesting. It's, it's not the same old thing over and over and over. And, um, you know, I wish I could... You know, I mean, obviously, the more financial success you have, the more you become dedicated to it, the more you're, you know, you've seen results and you feel like, you know, other people would have results. But I, I guess that's what it is. I mean, you know, I, I certainly stumbled into the business. I didn't charge into it like I think you did. Like you went into it with, you know, a more scientific approach. And I was 20 years old. I just wasn't that savvy yet. And <laughs> maybe I'm still not. I mean, yeah, they say you got to jump out the window and grow wings flying down, right? That's how you do it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good saying right there. I like that. You, you can't be all hat and no cattle. You got to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, what, what are some of the, you know, be, I, I know you, you discussed this and a, a year, maybe almost two years ago, I learned a strategy from you and I came up to you. I don't know if you remember this. We were, we were in California, I think it was a Note Investment Summit. The first time I heard you give this presentation, you talked about buying on terms. Yeah. And I was just blown away by the presentation. You gave an example of, of, of a case study of a, a deal that you did. And immediately I had a deal I could not get because the seller just wanted their price. And I couldn't figure out how, how I can make it happen, you know, just focusing on what I wanted. Instead of like what you said, try to get them what they want and make it creative. So you talk about buying on terms. And that's the first time I heard that. That was two years ago. And immediately I went away. I called the seller and said, hey, you know what? How about if we do A, B, C, D? And they said, oh, yeah, because I was giving them what they wanted. They agreed. And I came to the table and I said, thank you, Eddie. I appreciate that. I just took some stuff for your presentation, just put into action. I want to be signing the contract when I get back. Awesome. So let's 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 jump into that and talk about that because I think you're really on to something that's very innovative. Not too many people are actually doing this. Um, let's talk about that. Before we got on the on the on the call, you were talking about you had 70 people sign up for you know learning how to do this strategy, buying on terms. What made you come up with that concept? Was it you were just doing a deal and got creative and talk about it? Well, you know, the the one thing I hope that I've learned over the years is I'm a little more aware of the market conditions than I was when I was younger, right? I got some battle scars, right? I've lived through some cycles, and I've tried to become a lot more aware of variables in the industry that are taking us to a different level. And uh, you and I are in a number of things together, but we're in a mastermind, and you, I mean, you pretty much have to be knocking down 100 houses a year to be in this mastermind. I mean, there may be somebody in California that's doing 50 high ends, and, but if you're not 
if you're not deep in the space, financially, it wouldn't make sense for you to come. And secondly, it's just a vetted group, right? And I'm sitting there and I listen to these sessions and I hear these guys talk about the business. And as you know, I, you and I consider these guys the best in the space, right? They're the best at, they're ninja marketers. They can make their phone ring. They're ninja at the kitchen table getting deals closed. They usually all are running companies, uh, you know, so they have acquisitions team and they manage the heck out of them. And, and they're, you know, a lot of them have shifted to wholesaling because quite honestly, they make the profit wholesaling profit wholesale and they can flip and not have to do the construction right yeah so, but the, but here's but here's the market condition <laughs> the market condition is this wholesalers have made an inordinate fee for the last eight years probably last six years and the reason and you remember way back in the day wholesaling was just like what you did with your inventory if you had too much yeah and nobody yeah. went into the business thinking I'm gonna be a wholesaler there's only let you make 4,000 bucks a deal or 3,000 bucks a deal, right? So it wasn't some strategy you would start out with. And then all of a sudden, what happened was all of these investors, probably watching TV, wanted to go buy a house and didn't have the muscle to go buy a house, right? So they were watching HGTV or whatever, and they wanted to go buy the house, but they didn't have a machine to go do it. So where do you go? You go to active real estate investors and say, go bring me your deal you've already put together, right? That's the whole, that's how wholesaling got hot. Well, being around this space a long time, I understand that the only reason they let wholesalers make an inordinate fee is because the guy that was buying it thought there was a lift in the value, mm -hmm. right? He thought he bought it today and by tomorrow, it's going to be worth more money. Absolutely. The only reason somebody would do it, right? Well, I'm watching... CoreLogic and all these guys are giving a lot of data about where the market's trending, right? And they got all these red hot markets. I've been to these presentations where like the chief economist for CoreLogic is saying, Dallas-Fort Worth's overheated, Denver's overheated, Phoenix is overheated, blah, 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 right? Well, let me just tell you something. When you've been around as long as I have and you hear a market's overheated and it's flattening out, that means the wholesaling thing's fixing to start contracting. So, probably a year and a half ago, I was sitting in these masterminds and I was listening to these guys and they are saying our, our conversions are going down and our profits are going down. Now, these are the best in the markets. These aren't the newbies in the market. These are the guys that are the best at doing it. And I'm like, they need to change their conversion rate because they have only a plan A, which is buy for cash, buy low, sell high. And they're not attempting to go give the seller a price where the price seems like it's retail, but the financing is wholesale. Mm. Right? Yeah. And of course, I've been around this space forever. God knows I've probably looked at three or four hundred thousand seller finance notes. You and I've run in a circle of people that had bought on terms, but when I interviewed them, they always said this we buy on terms, and here is how we make our offer. Wait a minute. You got to listen to the customer story in the situation and craft the offer. You don't generically make the same seller finance offer on every deal. Some people stand still for zero interest. Some people won't stand still for, still for zero interest, right? So you have to learn kind of what you, what you could negotiate for and then you go negotiate for it, right? But in all honesty, when I said this in, in the room that you and I hang out in, I mean, there's some bad real estate cats in this room, yeah. right? I mean, they're the best. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I don't care what the price is. Price is irrelevant. I can pick the terms and make it a way better deal than you can just buying at a discount. And they kind of looked at me like, what the heck is he talking about? So I really spent about a year really laying out how to do it and kind of handpicking some guys that I coached, right? that had case studies, just like you did, right? Then all of a sudden, once I had better case studies of showing them what could be done, then the last year I've made this a momentum. I think, this is a fair statement, I think of the top 500 real estate investors in the business today that 150 of them will come to a class in the next 12 months. Yeah. Maybe 200. But that's a pretty high impact. There's no other educational company that's got a something that those guys want to come hang out at, right? Because they've all heard the regular stuff. Yeah, this is definitely a different spin and it definitely is, is, is trend setting. You know, and I still, 
listen, I still teach them some seller finance techniques when they come to a class. They just don't really know how they would use it yet, and I show them how they could use it. For example, you, you would say, well, Eddie, you'd be foolish not to show them partials, right? I mean, how you could buy a whole note and essentially recoup your investment by selling the front payments and keeping the back payments for free, right? I mean, anybody that's real estate oriented would say, oh, show me how to do that. Yeah. So we still show some other regular note stuff that we've shown for years, but but the I'm I'm really amped up. I mean, I'm I'm literally every day I've got a guy that's probably a top 20, 120 real estate investor in the business that's now already been involved with us. And I had a guy text me yesterday from California and he said, I just tied another one up. And uh, he said that when they did do zero interest, and he said, I'll pay for the house in 10 years and it'll cash flow. When we said, I'll sell it, I'll make um, about 50,000 on the buyer's down payment. And uh, then I'll turn around and net 500 bucks a month for 10 years because I got to pay off the underlying mortgage, which was to the seller of the property. And then after that, his payment goes up to almost 2,000 bucks a month. Yeah, right. that's awesome. Well, with all of the tools and strategies that, that you've learned over the 40 years, I'm pretty sure, like, I, I have this thing, like, when I, I first started off flipping houses, I wasn't a landlord, then the market crashed, it forced me to be a landlord with the inventory I had. I discovered the note business, I just focused just on that, primarily second, you know me, as a second guy, and now I'm doing a lot more real estate, because what I've learned is having a diversified strategy, whether it's, it's um, you know, I'm doing tax liens also, I'm doing things that I'm comfortable with and I have experience with and I'm learning how to utilize them, whether it's taking a note to, um, to real estate, whether it's an REO and then financing it back, you know, to make it to be the bank. So I'm sure you're, you, you have to be employing some of those strategies, you know, okay. whether it's REO, fix and flip or whatever. But I, I, you guys are more doing, if you foreclose on it, sell the financing it to someone else and plan that strategy instead of rehabbing the property out, right? Yeah, I mean, are you doing any rehabs locally to you or anything? No, we don't. We don't. We don't buy any local rehabs. I mean, I, I coach of the five biggest real estate investors in Dallas Fort Worth. Three of them are my students. I mean, so I'm around Dallas Fort Worth real estate investors that play at a high level. Yeah, but um, but I'm not physically doing it. Uh, and but. But I'm a note guy. I mean, in 1990, well, yeah, 1992, the guy that founded Homevestors, Ken D'Angelo, came to me. We had a history together. And he says, I want you to set up a note system where my franchisees, Homevestors, can create a note to a formula. Because real estate investors didn't have a formula and they were, they were real erratic in how they structured the loans unless they were taught, unless they were given a recipe. That's been a long time ago. Yeah. That, that yeah. revolutionized the seller finance note buying business because it put real estate investors in the business where they could do business with the associates and Bayview and all those guys that you know I have a long history with. But, you know, they went from, they could only do 50, 75 million dollars in production a year and bam, all of a sudden with real estate investors that were creating good paper that they could buy, all of a sudden the market shot to, 250 to 400 million dollars in seller finance notes a year being bought right so that was a that was a market change and and one of the things that when i teach people to buy on terms i'm going to teach them to sell on terms so we're going to go implement those same strategies like just create you know i look at i look at seller financing when you're going to seller finance a property the first thing that you should do is be a superior marketer because who do you sell to when you're seller financing, right? You want to sell to a guy that has great credit and somehow has been left behind by conventional lending. You don't want to sell to a guy that's got 12 charge offs on his credit report and his brother-in-law's loaned him money for the last time, right? Because it ain't going to work out any better for you than it did his brother-in-law, right? So the deal is, is I think you have to have it in your mind. Seller financing is not a bank of last resort. Seller financing is a bank that allows self-employed 
ITIM people who are people that are legally here but not, aren't American citizens, right? Green card holders. And people that, and particularly in your neck of the woods, there's story after story where people are like, they work related to somehow the metro area of New York City, you know, or Philly or something, and their companies pay them a low base salary. So they make all their income on bonus or all their income on commission. Go to the mortgage company and start trying to add that to your income and you know what's going to happen. So those are people that the market's left behind for financing. That's my guy. And so once you negotiate and buy a property and get the seller to agree to do financing for you, and there's a myriad of ways you can do it from almost no equity to virtually 100% equity, right? The case study I did for our friends the other day at the Mastermind, they, this was a house that no wholesaler would even ride out and look at. I mean, they owed 300 on a house that was worth 330. How are you going to make a wholesale deal work there? Yeah. So this was a wrap of the underlying mortgage, right? And uh, so there's different ways to structure it depending on, you know, kind of what the story of the seller is. So it's fun. I, you, you guys can tell I like this. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is like, this is like therapy. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah I mean, it, the, the good thing is that it's always good. And, and I like being in the groups that you're in and also just attending the events that you give also note Expo and the other events because it gives me the opportunity to get myself around other people who have learned from you and different strategies and grow that way. And just, you're just a resource in a business and a go-to person. And you, you have, uh, it's like a passion for education and teaching people the ways. I know you've been doing it for, for a while. Um, you know, is that, is that what gets you going and, you know, continue to be able to add value down the line to other people, show them things, show them the unknown, bring them into the new territory, as you say, to teach them things they probably wouldn't even have thought of. There's a lot of out-of-the-box strategies and concepts that you come up with. What challenges do you face, though? I mean, I know it's not all, you know, a hunky-dory and pie in the sky. I'm pretty sure, you know, you have some battle scars. What challenges do you face today in your business and what you have going on? Well, I, I, am, I am a guy that is focused on helping people focus on wealth. Transactional income is necessary, but you can do a transaction that has upfront profit and long-term profit. The thing that I see about this new ninja real estate investor that you and I know so many of is that that's transactional business. And when the market dries up, it's bam, it's, it's a whole new game. Yeah. And uh, so I, I want to help people do something long-term because I've made mistakes in my past where I didn't, position myself to own a portfolio, right? Because, because the, there's market conditions, you get really good at something, you know, you can buy low, sell high or whatever. And I've done that. You've done it with hundreds of properties and I've done it with a whole bunch of notes and you have with notes too. You've been very successful with notes, but so, so, you know, we own a portfolio, as you know, operationally, we've got a bunch of really seasoned people that run a lot of that side of the business for us. And we, on any given day have 1200 to 1500 notes in under management. And um, then we sell loans to investors, just one off notes. We've got a, you know, structure where we do that. And uh, I'm out, I'll, I'll always view what I'm doing is I'm the scout. You know, I'm the guy that's out there looking for the next horizon. And the, the seller finance notes that we're teaching real estate investors how to make today there's going to be a lot of those notes that eventually are going to come to the marketplace and they're going to say, Hey, we want to sell these notes, right? Either the person that they've owner financed, that's owner financed them when they bought the property or the note where they owner financed it on the backside or any combination of that. And so I'm just trying to help people with how to go do the business right. So when they go to the secondary market and want to sell these loans, they can sell them. Absolutely. So what do, you, what do you have for new people that's coming in? Um, you know, we have a few minutes left on the show. I just want to really touch on the new people. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that I created you know, you know, my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and all of that. Is really My goal was to educate a 1,000 people this year. And this is the reason that we created a passion for real estate investors to bring people like yourself on to share their story, 
um, you know, and really touch on the new people that's looking to come in, whether they're a business professional, lawyer, accountant, or just, you know, everyday working person that's trying to get in. What advice can you give them um, starting off uh, to, to encourage them really just to, um, you know, enjoy this real estate business and try to develop a passion for it? From your experience, what advice can you give? Well, one of the things interesting about this, this creative financing that I'm training these high-end guys, the high-end guys are not more familiar with this than the brand new guys mm. because it's all a new game. Yeah. And so the same thing that I'm teaching a guy that buys 300 houses a year with the same thing that I would teach somebody that wants to go buy five houses this year. And, and here's the thing about it. The one thing that creative financing will enable you to do is you have such a different angle than your competition. You're not fighting at the doorstep with 20 people essentially making the same offer. You're making an offer they haven't heard before. Mm. And, and people say, well, you know, can I learn to do this? And I'm like, you can't learn to do it in 30 minutes, you know? And, and I've got some stuff that if, if you're interested, I'm going to give these guys like a contact stuff. If they oh, absolutely. Let us, let's do it. Let's and do I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of start a thought process, right? I'm going to like give them some stuff that's, that's good, solid materials that gets them a sense of, okay, what would it look like for me sitting at the kitchen table when the guy says, I will not sell for your price? Like, how would you say, okay, if you will let me buy under my terms, I will be, Mr. Property Seller, I'm willing to pay your price. And how much different that makes you than the competition. So you're asking me when a guy's kind of new in the business, Man, let me just tell you something. If you can go and if you can go and sit down at the kitchen table and say there is a way to structure this deal for me to be different than anybody else you're talking to, what's the seller going to say? I'm not interested in talking about that. Of course, they're going to be interested. Yeah, they're going to listen. Yeah. Yeah, man. But well, I, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing your wealth of knowledge and information. I mean, is, is there any way you want to direct our listeners to go check it out? Do you have any masterminds going on? A squeege page or something? Website? You want to come forward? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's, what, here's what I thought I would do. I've got a couple of, I've got a couple of things here. These are, these are some reports, and they're not long. They're condensed, but, but they're, it's solid stuff, okay? And uh, one of them is called Five Steps to Dictating the Terms to Your Lender. Right. Awesome. So your lender in this case is the guy selling the property or his underlying lender. Right. And then, um, and the other one is, is, uh, getting the property seller to the yes. In other words, how do you talk to them in a way the talk off? Mm -hmm. How do you talk to them in a way that says you can structure terms? So, um, I went and made sure before we started today, I went and made sure that, that it, this was in place. So I'm going to just, it's just a simple little thing to get somebody started. They're going to go to info, just an email, just info at noteschool.com and, and just put creative financing in the subject line. Right. And then if they want to type something in, Hey, I heard Eddie on Fucon's, you know, podcast and blah, blah, blah. And just kind of let us know how they, they found us. But the, but the point is that, the reason I picked these two things is because this isn't some novel they have to read. I mean, these are short reads. I mean, we spent a fair amount of time developing them so that we're saying every kind of paragraph has a, a significant meaning to it. But this is really a great way to get them started. And if they want to, you know, progress and kind of learn more about how we do and stuff. Yeah, we have classes. We have, uh, we have three-day classes. Uh, we have home study materials. The thing I like about a class when they, somebody progresses to that is we just do case study after case study so we can stop right in the middle of the class and say, okay, here's what happened. Now, what could have happened, right? And you can kind of reconstruct how you configure the deal and stuff and the creativity in the audience. I'm, it's, it's thrilling to me because I see the creativity. They start out here and by the end of the class, they're like way up here and like realizing what they could do. So yeah. it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. In person and visual. And I really appreciate you putting that together for our listeners, man. So you guys heard the information. Make sure you go check it out. 
This is the man, the myth, the legend, Eddie Speed. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on another great episode of PFREI, a passion for real estate investment. Be, for, be sure to check us on Twitter and Instagram at a passion, the number four, REI. Thanks again. I appreciate your time, sir. Good to see you, my friend.